Hello everyone, with this Photoshop tutorial I want to show you a different approach on how to edit like Max Rife. For those of you who don't know him, I would highly suggest to look him up since he has a very unique editing style which will be fun to replicate. For the purpose of this video I am going to be using this as a reference image and if you plan on following along you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First of course we need to do the raw adjustments, which will be done in the camera raw editor. Let me say to get this style right, as you can see in this reference image, the weather conditions are pretty much the same, we have a very foggy landscape. Also the shutter speed I used here is very important since we want to have some nice structure in the water in the foreground. So with our base image set up, we can start the post processing and I want to start by changing the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast, just so I have more control over that myself. Now let's expand the basic panel. I am not going to change the white balance since I want to change the colors with a bit of color grading later on. For now, I want to work on the exposure and although the histogram looks good, for this specific Max Rive style, I want to bring down the exposure, making everything slightly darker. I do want to raise the shadows a little bit. And then let's also bring up the whites to introduce some contrast. This is looking pretty good so far. Compared to the reference image, you can see there are a few highlights which are really standing out in his image, but the rest is pretty much very, very dark. So we want to keep working on that. However, Max has almost no pure blacks in his images. And for that reason, I want to bring up the blacks here as well, giving them just a softer look. I'm going to raise them quite a bit more than usual, of course. And at the same time, let's introduce some texture. And I want to bring down the clarity, which helps with the soft look. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. Not only will this make the whole image softer, but this will also lessen the contrast and brighten up everything some more. Then we need to work on the vibrance. I want to bring it up. And besides the vibrance, I also want to raise the saturation. Since Max images are usually quite heavily saturated, now I think we're pretty much done with the basic adjustments. You can see we went from this to this. Not much has changed except for the brightness. Now let's do a bit of masking and target a few things locally. I want to start using a linear gradient over the foreground because here it's important to pump up the colors and also introduce more texture to the water. So let me deactivate the overlay. How can we do this? I want to start by simply raising the saturation and I'm going to raise it quite a lot, introducing a lot more color in the foreground. For the details, I'm simply introducing clarity and texture. You can see how this really brings out the details of the river in the foreground. Then let's create a radial gradient. I want to use this to target the waterfall in the distance just to make it a little more visible. Just like in Max images where he has usually one very visible subject. So how can we do that? We can simply bring up the exposure, making it slightly brighter without making it look too unnatural. And I do want to bring up the clarity as well. Just adding some more details in here. Perfect. The next thing we can notice by looking at the reference image is the dark sky. And we can implement this in our image as well. So here let's just use a linear gradient and try to target most of the sky up there. I really don't want to target this bright spot on the right side since this would look super unnatural as the light is coming in from here. But with that top selection I'm going to bring down the exposure a lot, making the top part darker. Let's maybe adjust the size and rotate it some more, but that's looking good. Then let's use another radial gradient for the right side. I want to introduce a bright spot right here. And I'm doing this by raising the exposure. And I also want to bring down the dehaze to just kind of add some glow effect on that area. Perfect. I want to use another radial gradient just for that center part right here. 
what I want to do here is to further bring up the saturation, making those greens in the forest more intense. I also want to introduce some texture and some clarity just to bring out details. Wonderful. And finally, I do want to add one more linear gradient over the very near foreground just right there. And here I'm going to bring up the contrast. And I'm also going to drop the shadows. And thus I'm just making the darkest parts of that river in the foreground darker. All right. And here we have the image after the masking. So we went from this after the basic adjustments to this with a bit of masking. Looks pretty good so far. Now let's start to work on the colors for a moment. For that reason, let me open the color mixer panel and I want to bring down the yellow saturation and the green saturation while increasing aqua and blue. The reason for me to do this is comparing this to the Max Rive reference image, you can see there are a lot more blue color tones going on. You can still see a little bit of green, but it's not that intense. So by changing the saturation here, I want to come closer to that look. Another thing I can do is to open up the split toning panel right there. And I want to go into the shadows, set the hue to something cold in the blue range and just bring up the saturation. I'm going to use only a tiny amount because we want to change the colors later on some more. Then I think I want to add some vignetting as well. So let's open up the effects tab and just bring down that vignetting slider. Perfect. And finally, I want to head into the calibration tab and just bring up the blue primary saturation. All right. And that's the image after the raw adjustments. So that's the original shot. And here we have the edited version. Now let's jump into Photoshop to fine tune this image. First off, I do want to mess around with the scaling of the whole image. So let me duplicate that layer by pressing Ctrl J and I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation. And what I want to do is to scale the image vertically. So I'm holding down the shift key, click on the bottom point right there and just drag it up slightly. Just want to make it a little bigger. So you can see it's not much of a difference but the whole landscape looks a bit more dramatic this way. And I want to bring it up to get some darkness back in the foreground just like that, but this looks fine. And then we can do a little bit of dodging. Therefore, let's create a new layer and let me switch the blending mode to overlay. For the dodging and burning, I usually use the decay metal plugin, but for this specific layer, we can use a different technique. So I want to select the highlights of the image. Therefore, I'm hitting Control Alt 2 which will give me a nice selection. And with the marching ends active, I'm simply hitting that layer mask icon. Now we have a layer that just targets those highlights. Let's grab the brush by pressing B, bring down the brush opacity a bit, set the foreground color to white, and then I'm just going to paint in a few more highlights here and there, especially in the water. Just adding some more contrast overall but that's looking good. Now let's merge everything. I'm hitting Control Alt Shift E for that, which puts everything in a new layer. What I want to do with this layer is to apply some very, very subtle autumn glow effect. Therefore, let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, set the radius to around 30% because I think this looks pretty good and click OK. Then right away, head into the edit menu, choose Fade Gaussian Blur, switch the blending mode to overlay, which will create a very contrast rich autumn glow effect. And now we're going to bring down the opacity. So let's say 16% looks rather good. Let's hit OK. All right, perfect. At this point, we can do a little more color grading. I want to get closer to max cold look, especially for the shadows. I want to do that by creating a gradient map. And let's change that blending mode to overlay once more. Bring down the opacity. All right. Of course, we need to adjust the gradient to get the same colors. So let's click on it. The color on the left side affects the shadows. In order to get blue shadows, we want to select a blue color tone. 
going with a rather dark one to also add some kind of more contrast. And I want to make it very saturated, just like that. Okay. Then looking at the reference image, there seems to be some warmer highlights going on. And to replicate that, we can use the point on the right side since this is targeting the highlights. So we want to get some warmer color in here, maybe some in the orange range, and again, bring up the saturation. Okay. And you can see with just one gradient map, we went from this to this. The blue color tone in the shadows is much more visible at the moment, but we can further enchance that in a minute. But first, what I want to do next is some kind of more heavy manipulation. In images like this of Max Rife, there is usually some fog lingering over the valley in the distance, just like in a reference image. And I am like 99% certain that some of the fog has been added using the brush in Photoshop. So I want to do the same. For that, I'm creating a new layer and I'm grabbing the brush. And in the brush menu, you can see I have a brush preset for fog. And I'm going to use this to introduce some artificial fog to this image. Now, again, let's lower the brush opacity. Otherwise, this looks super, super fake quite fast. And let's adjust the brush size. And what I'm doing now is to just paint over a few areas. This is still too much opacity, just like that. And I'm playing around with the brush size and I try to only paint in where it makes sense. So right there in the distance in the back, maybe making it thicker over some areas. Okay, that looks really, really good already. So here's the image without the fog and here it is with the fog applied. We can tweak it some more. So let's go to filter blur and here I want to choose. Let's go with motion blur. It's important to keep the angle at zero. So we get a horizontal motion blur and just use a tiny amount of distance here. Otherwise this again looks kind of strange. Okay. And I also want to go to filter blur, Gaussian blur, and just apply a little bit of Gaussian blur to it on top. All right. Now that is looking pretty good so far. We can apply a layer mask on it and let me brush out a few areas here and there. Just make sure to set the foreground color to black. It doesn't make sense for the fog to be over that tree right there. So I'm trying to mask it out. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. Then I do have a little problem with the color of the river in the foreground. Comparing it to the reference image, you can see it's way too much on the cyan color side. So let me create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Here I want to head into the cyan tones and just play around with the hue, bringing it up a little bit, just giving the river a richer blue tone. Perfect. At the same time, I don't want to affect the rest of the image. So I'm going to use the layer mask and just mask out everything else. Perfect. Now again, I want to merge everything into a single layer. So I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E one more time. And I want to further work on the color by heading back into the camera raw editor. I can do this by selecting the layer, heading to filter and here choose camera raw filter. What I want to do here is to head back into the split toning, go into the shadows and just make those blue tones in the shadows stronger. So I set up the hue and bring up the saturation. Just like that. I also want to introduce more warmth to the highlights. So let's head to the highlights and bring up the hue and the saturation. Just a bit, don't want to overdo it, but this is looking good. And then I also want to go back into the basic panel and just bring up the blacks very slightly. At the same time, bring down the shadows. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's hit okay. At this point, what's really bothering me is the brightness of the sky at the very top. So let's one more time create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. And since we want to make this area darker, I'm going to use a gradient, so I'm hitting G and I'm setting the foreground color to something very, very dark in the blue range. 
something like this. And with the gradient tool, I'm now just going to drag down a gradient like that and thus make the sky darker. Of course, this is looking a bit weird, so I'm going to bring down the opacity just like that. I'm just noticing some sensor spots in here, so I'm hitting Control Alt Shift E one more time. And let's grab the spot healing brush to get rid of them. Okay, and I would say here we have the finished image. So I think I got pretty close to the look of Max Rife for his foggy landscape scenes. So if you have any further suggestions or any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.